Do you do you find it generally unpleasant to have to sit down immediately following someone that you know sat there for a while? Nah. I always it bothers me to sit in someone else's butt ghost. That's what it feels like to me. Like there's a <laughs> like there's the ambient warmth of the, of the body that was there. Well, next time we get to the studio and someone's got the uh, booth before us, I'll be sure that before you sit in your chair, I'll sit in it, but only for like 30 seconds. To absorb the butt ghost? Yeah, I'll, wash I'll out exercise the, the demons. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys, one podcast, the Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm one guy. I don't think I'm going to have a future as a North Korean athlete. Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. Don't doubt me. Don't do it. Two guys, one podcast. Making fun of handicapped people <laughs> since 1981. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. You know that's what uh, that's what Kim Kardashian does professionally. Uh, exercise the butt demons. Yeah, well, I think it's so large. You know how many butt demons she sucked into that thing? Are oh, you saying there's a gravitational Almost as many cock demons? <laughs> there's a uh, there's a there's a, a sort of a a an ass spiritual uh, gravitational pull. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Two Guys One Podcast. I'm one guy, and I'm the other, and this is the podcast. Um, Welcome to our uh, comedy show. Uh, we are two good buddies that uh, fi- find ourselves in the midst of busy lives, wanted to schedule a little, little time with each other, and uh, wanted to do that in a creative way. So here we are. we got a little comedy podcast show. What we do is we bring you some regular segments. You can find more info, more about us, and all of the archives at twoguysonepod.com. Uh, we share a little bit about ourselves, talk a little bit about the world, try to make you laugh in the meantime. We'll get right to the show itself with the rundown. Uh, we've got some listener mail. Oh, yeah, right on. Is it um, is it the band? It is not. Ah. Uh, we've got a word of the day. All right. Steel 20 slang, right? Yes, Good indeed. We've got an old news. Because we're all going to be old at some point, so we might as well learn from it today. Uh, we got a Southern Comfort. I can I can uh, sip some lemonade to that. Yeah, uh, we've got a uh, statistical analysis of Bob Ross paintings. What? Yes, I found this article and I couldn't help myself. So we're going to talk about that a little what bit. What statistics? Like how many deer he's painted? Uh, we'll we'll get into it, uh, and then we're going to wrap things up as we always do with a word from Bob Ross. All of that's coming up on this, the 96th episode of Two Guys, One Pod. 96 uh, is a good year, man. 96 is a good year, or it was a good year. Um, yeah, 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 indeed. Uh, 96 episodes in the can, that means that we are only, well, if you're listening to this, that means there are only three between here and episode 100. We want you to be part of episode 100, too. All you got to do is call us, wish us a happy birthday, a happy anniversary, tell us to go fuck off, whatever, 504-613-5635. That's the number, 504-613-5635. You know, so far, the phone calls that we've gotten? One. Well, there have been multiple phone calls, but so far we have a butt dial where there was something going on at the other end of the phone call, but it was all muffled. Mm, it's those damn butt ghost. <laughs> we got a a call, a tentative, like, 15-second, sounded like they a were pondering. spectral, if you will. Like, maybe they were going to say something, and then they they're like, nervous. no, never mind. And then we had, like, what a I just call. Thought of really wasn't that funny. Click. Yeah, pretty much. And then we had someone call. And almost immediately hang up. Like, they got all the way through whatever the prompts are, and then they were just like, no, this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is too much fucking work. Yeah, apparently so, apparently so. So, I, I'm sorry for that. Uh, if you'd rather record something yourself and email it to us, we were trying to make it simple. 504, <coughs> you gonna you, you gonna make it over there? I would drink some water, but that's what made me cough. <laughs> okay. Wrong you got to cough to get off. That's not that doesn't work with water. That's not true. You if you cough and swallow you drowned, water. Man. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Oi. 
Whew, all right. Was that Jewish water? Yeah. Uh, 504-613-5635. That's the phone number. Call us and wish us a happy birthday. You could be on episode 100. Let's start the show off with a word of the day. Oh, let me get something off my chest right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. So for this show, historically, I have done almost no prep. Now, whether the listeners think that that is fair or not... <laughs> Or that I'm taking the time that they're taking out of their day to listen to us uh, respectfully or not is besides the point. It's how I operate. Uh, but since we started the new endeavor, it forces me to do prep for the show. Yes. If I'm going to do prep for one show, I've got to do prep for the other show. I've got to do prep for this show. Why do, so, why do you feel that that's the case? I just feel it's not fair. I think that there are. I think that so there are. What, what I'm getting at is, even though it didn't make it into the rundown, I did have two Man Scout badges for this episode. Oh, okay. You well now now you're bitching because I I cock blocked you. I knocked down your two Man Scouting badges because I'm pretty sure I wasn't going to say who did it. Well, no, it was me. I knocked them down, but I did I did so because I'm pretty sure we've done them before. I don't think so. One of them, maybe the other one, definitely hadn't. Okay, we, but I don't know for sure. You're right. I don't which know one? 100%. Which one do you believe we definitely we maybe have? I don't think we've done either of them, but I do think we have talked about the subject matter of both at one point or another on the episode. Oh, I so, guarantee look, you, we've I'm talked wa- about the subject look, matter. Look, I'm not going to give what the Man Scout badge. What the definition is, I'll say both both badges now. Excellent. And I would appreciate it if the listeners will confirm or deny. Confirm or deny whether we've done them already. <laughs> there you go. Because I did do prep for the show. Okay. The first badge is emergency preparedness. I may have done this one before, not in the way that I was going to present it. But if I'd already done it, I was going to pass. I'm pretty sure you did it, and I'm pretty sure you did it the same way you presented it to me earlier, I think. Okay. The other badge that I'm almost positive we haven't done at all right. is landscape architecture. Hmm. And this one, again, it had the ring of familiarity to it. Let's just put it like that. Well, they're all done in the same damn vein. Well, no, yeah, sure. It's a bit. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's a good point. So I'd appreciate it if I hadn't done them. Let us know here, if I have done them. Let us know. Even it, here's more to the point. If man scouting is your favorite part of this show, here's how to get more man scouting badges. Write us a list of what we've done and email it to us. Here are the 14 man scouting badges that have currently been. How many do you think we've done? You think we've done 20? No. I don't think. I mean, we've done we've done 96 episodes. Total. Man scouting wasn't there from the very beginning. It was there pretty early, though. And it hasn't been. We haven't done it every episode. It's never been in every episode. I'm going to say a tenth. A tenth of our content has a man scout badge. So you think less than 10 episodes? Not You think we've done. You think we've done. So I'm saying if it was the over under and I made the over 10, you're going under. Yeah, I'm going to go under. Oh, I'd take that bet every day and twice on Sundays. If you put the over at 20, I'm probably taking the under. But I'm feeling not confident about it. I think you have a fondness for this segment. But it's not that as... That is shading what we've actually done. Maybe so. See, I look through the I look through the Man Scout. I look through the Boy Scout badges. Right. When I'm trying to come up with a bit. And I want to say there's only like nine of them that I've used. I want I feel like that's right. This this brings up okay, here's one here's one way that you could get a rough count. It wouldn't be a total count. You could go to our you could go to our uh, our page, our website, twoguysonepod.com, click the our show page, go there, and then there's actually tags. And I tag every episode with several different tags. The problem is I don't necessarily tag every episode that has man's not every episode that ever had man scouting has the man scouting tag on it. Every episode So if there's a repeat technically your fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> hmm, I guess so. 
Anyway, there you go. Uh, that's a task for you if you'd like it. Let us know. The, give us the list. I bet it's closer to 20 than it is to 10. Hey, it pays in free funny. <laughs> it does. It does indeed pay in free. Hey, I'll tell you what it would pay for. If and when we ever get around to doing the uh, uh, the man scouting uh, stickers, you'd definitely be on the list to get a free one, I think, if you made the list. Am I right? No. There you go. You don't make no? money giving shit away for free. What? <laughs> Which is why we broke. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why we're broke. Um, let's start with the word of the day. Uh, the word of the day is uh, 1920 slang. We're either using a, a phrase or a word that was very popular at the time. Now, fallen out of the vernacular, we're going to bring it back by using it here on the show. The word of the day today is sock dollager. S- it's somebody all who- one word. Sock dollager. Is somebody who stores money in a sock drawer. They Incorrect. sock money away. Incorrect. Bullshit. I would be a sock dollarer. Uh, sock dollager is an event or action of great importance. What the fuck? Two Guys One Pod's 100th episode will be a real sock dollager. How does, what is the etymology of that word? I don't know. That's not given in in the article from BuzzFeed that I found these these twenty slangs. People in the twenties, you crazy. <laughs> it is a strange word. That's true. Sock dollager. That was spelled S O C K. S O C K D O L L A G E R. Sock dollager. Mm, I don't. I I'm not. That's, Sin. That one doesn't roll off the tongue. No, nah, that's something from the 20s. I that don't like slang's it. not the berries? Not the berries at all. It's not worth ankling over there to read. That's a weak piece of calico? That's not, that's terrible. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. No. Let's go. If uh, you're referring to that as calico, you need to go tell it to Sweeney. <laughs> um, we should, do, okay, look. We do the same fucking shtick every time we talk about 1920 slang. Okay. To where we try to use as much of the slang as possible when talking about that bit that we've already used. Sure. All right? And we got to be on giggle water if we don't start doing it in a very cartoonish 1920s accent. <laughs> You're saying we just do drop us, huh? Oh yes. Uh it's it's time for Southern Comfort, sir. This is uh Southern Comfort, of course. We we talk through a story taking place in the uh beloved South where we both call home. But I'm not gonna tell you where the story takes place. We'll see at the end of the story if other guy can guess the state in which this uh story occurred. I'm 0 for ten. <laughs> you, I think you got one. I think you did get one somewhere no. along the way. And I don't know that we've done 10 Southern Comforts, but we're close if we haven't done 10. I I haven't gotten any. Uh, I think that was true a few episodes ago, and I think you got either the last one or the next to last one. No. All right. We'll see if you get Zero, this Zero, zilch, nada, nit. Headline. Deputies say woman went on crack binge, gave birth in motel bathtub. Florida. Calling it right now, <laughs> fucking Florida. You're, you're, Crack and birth <laughs> is Florida. Your Babe Ruth, you're pointing yeah. your bat to the outfield. You're calling your shot, huh? Yeah, that's a certain kind of crazy. That's Florida crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Florida crazy is probably the name of this episode, by the way. A not certain Florida, kind of crazy. It's like this: if it's if it's crazy, but n- not really like it doesn't have that certain Southern flair to it. Yeah. You know it's Florida crazy. That certain kind of crazy. Yeah. Florida crazy. Florida crazy. <laughs> um, an infant. Now, see, here's the I will say this. This is a, it's, it's an interesting story. It is an amazing story. It's also not exactly something to be taken light of because there is a child that potentially is, is still in danger, might have even lost his life or her life. An infant is in critical condition days after his mother said she gave birth Uh, in a motel bathtub while on a 24-hour drug binge. Crystal Hassel, 37 years old, told investigators that she... Okay, let me... This is something I've wondered. Yes. When you're, like, on a coke binge, 
Right? Okay. It's like, man, I was on a Coke binge for three days. <laughs> right. Does that mean that you took Coke for three straight days? Or like the effects of Coke wore off after three days? Yeah, no, my my understanding when someone says that they went on a binge, like if you think about... Uh, I wanted a two-day binge. Yeah, if you so my understanding when someone says that would be that they maintained a level of intoxication over the entire conscious period of whatever they say. So whether that be a day or two days or whatever. So it may take twelve hours to get out of your system. Yes, but before those twelve out, but any like long before the twelve hours arrive for you to be sober again, you've already snorted some more coke, or already smoked some more crack, or already drank another bottle of liquor or whatever bender it is that you're on. I think it means I think it means the length of intoxication, not when you last used. I'm not following you. Okay, so I went on a three day binge or I went on a three day bender. Right. So first day twenty four hours, second day twenty four hours, but I stopped doing Coke at like 11 p.m. on the second day. I was still coked out of my brain until noon on day three. Uh, possibly. Does that qualify a three-day binge? I uh, Maybe. I think you're arguing – I think we're um, arguing semantics at this point. I uh, mean, I think it's obviously we're arguing yeah. semantics. Crystal Hansen. She was not arguing semantics. Uh, I say Hanson, not Hanson. Hassel. Crystal Hassel. She didn't have any donuts, though. That's Haskell's. Uh, she's 37. She told the investigators that she, her boyfriend, and her 11-month-old child, she already had a baby less than a year ago. You know what those are called? Oh, God. Irish, Irish twins. twins. Yeah. Uh, they checked into the motel room at the Vacation Host Inn on Friday night. She said that even though she was seven months pregnant, she started going into labor after smoking crack cocaine for an entire day. She was seven months pregnant. She's got an 11-month-old child. Yeah, yeah. She's currently seven months pregnant. So she got pregnant three months, four months after the first child was born. Yeah. That's Uh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that is fucking crazy. Um. It gets more crazy. <laughs> it's a particular kind of crazy. We'll see whether it's Florida crazy. Oh, it is. She said that even though she was seven months pregnant, she started going into labor after smoking crack cocaine for an entire day. Vincent Terrell, Hassel's boyfriend, left with the 11-month-old boy to run an errand, so Hassel delivered the baby alone in the bathtub. According to the sheriff's office report... You mean she went into labor and the boyfriend was like, I got stuff to do. <laughs> no. It, it's my understanding she went into labor after the boy was like boyfriend was like hey we gonna go get some snacks and she smokes more crack and went into labor but it gets worse other guy according to the sheriff's office report Hassel even cut the umbilical cord with her teeth you're fucking right she did she chewed that shit through what the fuck how'd you gonna cut it at one point, according to her uh, telling investigators, the baby stopped breathing, uh, said Judge Cochran, a public information officer for the sheriff's office. Hassel's first call wasn't to 911, though. It was to her boyfriend, who told her, who she told should hurry up and get back to the motel. But as Terry uh, sped to return, he was pulled over by Marion County deputies. He was wanted for what, do you imagine? Selling crack. How about attempted murder in Colorado? How long ago? I don't know, but recently enough that they were still upset at him about it. Um, okay, so I'm going to go out on a limb here. Let me let me put this piece let me put this puzzle together. Sure. We got a lady. <laughs> I would hesitate to call this one a lady. She got an 11-month-old. Okay. She is giving birth in a motel in the bathtub. Well, one imagines she wasn't. She didn't start in the bathtub, but somewhere in the birthing process, she thought bathtub be the place to get for this. Okay. 
Maybe she was chilling in there because she's like, you know, I'm high on the crack cocaine. Bathtub feels good. It's cool. Uh, okay. Cuts the umbilical cord with her teeth. Sure. Like you do. Her boyfriend leaves the motel. This was all before those Dude, things. Dude, I'm about to do some sleuthing right now. You don't even know. Okay. <laughs> boyfriend leaves. Ends up the cops getting when she called the police for the baby thing, right? Well, the the cops pulled him. No, she had she called and said, "Hey, I'm having the baby. You got to come back." Oh, so he wasn't even. He was somewhere else. Yes, and he got pulled over somewhere else. Not at the hotel. Yes, no, not at the motel. He was okay. far away with the kid. They were running an errand. The, the eleven month old. old. He gets She's, pulled over. He gets arrested because he's wanted for attempted murder in Colorado. Yes, and okay. you know what they and okay. you know what they don't let you do. Call the woman in the bathtub having a baby. Like they, when they arrest you and you're the guy, like when they pull you over because you got a broken tail light and they run your plates and they find out you're wanted for arrested murder, you they, get arrested. Yeah, you don't collect two hundred dollars. Yeah. You don't pass go. You don't. You go directly to fucking right, jail. So jail. When did this? Does it say when it happened? Uh, this was earlier this week. This was. Let's see. This was April eighteenth. Okay. If they're in a motel, I'm going to guess, and she's pregnant. I don't think this is – I think they're vacationing, right? And maybe it's because the place is – They're, they're going on a crack vacation? No, no, no. I don't think they're from – I don't think they're from where they're staying at. Okay. Obviously, he's from Colorado or, or was from Colorado. <laughs> when you kill a man in Colorado, right, sometimes right. you have to leave. Right. Especially when they don't catch you. <laughs> yeah, so he – so I think – I think they're from out of town. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is a I've already called it. This is a this is Florida crazy. Okay. I'm going to guess they're at like a spring break hot spot cuz it's about that time of year, man. You think 37-year-old married couples with 11-month-old kids go on crack vendors at spring break? Fucking yeah, you know what those college kids are doing out there? These guys are like 10th down the list. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, you got the cops have spring breakers to worry about. That's what they know is going to be, be the majority of their time uh during this part of the year. Well, yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll save you from No, from... don't save me from nothing. I'm not done sleuthing. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to say it's like a spring break hotspot in Florida. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say it's either Panama City, Florida, Destin, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I don't think it's Miami, Tampa Bay, Orlando. I don't think it's any of those. Would you like to know? I'm not done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> By Joe Watson. Maybe it's because of MTV or whatever growing up in the 90s. Sure. But Fort Lauderdale has always been the crazy place for spring break. So I'm going to say this is Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I will I will take it as a win even if it's anywhere in Florida. Of course. Of course. Are you ready now? Yes. Uh, it is Florida. Boom! You ha- you finally have a winner. I knew it's. I knew. I knew it was Florida crazy. It's Florida crazy. That's right. Um, it, it's not any of those cities you mentioned though. The, really? It was, no, it took place in in o- o- Osala, Ocala, Marion County. Not a clue. O C A L A, Osala, Ocala. I'm not sure how you say that. Our Floridian uh, listeners, if you would write us in, two guys one pod at me dot com. Let us know what the name of this uh, happening crack spot is. I felt, I feel a little bummed. I mean, I've still won, and I won from the beginning. I still feel a little bummed out though. Why? Because I thought, man, I thought I had solid logic. Here, you know what the best I part I was about to Doctor House this shit. You know what the best part of this story is? What's that? The eleven-month-old boy has been placed in foster care. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's the best thing to happen in the store. Yeah. Uh, Hassel is currently being held on a $5,000 bond. Terry is awaiting extradition to Colorado for the attempted murder case. 
Uh, that is our Southern Comfort for today. Man, I guess it was Southern, but there wasn't anything comforting about that story. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's a, that's a true story. I almost feel like we need to do Bob Ross right now. Uh, no, but i tell you what. Well, why don't we go to uh, a little listener mail. Jamail! Jamail is here! Woo. This comes from Eaglet Joe. I fucking knew it. <laughs> uh, the, um, Let's see what EJ got to say today. All right. The, the first thing she sends us is an article, but I'm going to skip that. Uh, here we go. She says, I'm with the other, the subject line is Brits suck at labeling the United States. And there, there is an article. We'll get to that in a minute. But then she says, I'm with other guy on the technology deal. I have a tendency to come home from work and not turn on the TV or computer um, or play on the phone for most of the night. After sitting in front of the computer most of the day and texting, calling continually with 12 plus salesmen, I just need a break. Other guy's French guy was creepy accurate. Uh, of course, she's speaking of. Jean Pierre, the tutu does, maker. Does she talk to a lot of creepy French guys? <laughs> That's a good question. I want to know. Maybe she just knows a lot of people in the tutu industry. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would happen first. That's the obvious choice. Uh, she also says any word on Man Scout stickers? Uh, the, since I brought them up earlier, she says my back window would be filling up by now. Proud or shameful? Hmm. Which would it be if you had a window full of man scouting stickers? Is that is that pride uh, or shame? I think it's I think it's pride to have done the act. I think that it is shameful to have listened to the show to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that's excellent <laughs> advertisement there, other guy. Um, she says uh, finally regarding the cold granny. Of course, this was our old news story from a week ago, yeah, I believe. The, the not so dead grandma. Yeah, the not so dead grandma. <laughs> <laughs> number one the door wasn't locked it just doesn't have a handle on the inside for normal obvious reasons why what's would a the freezer no- what what's the normal obvious reason why would a freezer have a handle on the inside okay look look, look. Did, oh my god why until until we had kids get locked in a trunk why would a trunk of a car ever have a handle on the inside i don't know why did graveyards used to have fucking bells because it happened a lot, I guess. And you th- obviously, it still happens. <laughs> How much harder is it just to, like, if the person is dead, guess what? The door's not going to be door open. Won't open. If the person isn't dead, you'll know because the door's open. <laughs> um, Look, my sister's husband, they thought he was dead in a motorcycle accident. He was on the autopsy table with the Y already fucking cut into him. And the and the morticians are whoever was doing the uh, embalming. Yeah, hands in his guts. Oh my god! And he woke up. Oh my god! That's fucked up. Yeah. Uh, all right. No, and she says number two. Historically, wakes occur so to confirm that the person is dead. Also, here's also the best part, man. What is because the accident thing? Like he had crazy head trauma, right? So. He's got like a goldfish memory. Would you, like Dora from yeah, Finding Nemo? Yes, yes. Dory or whatever it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, a lot like that. Uh, during a wake, the family would stay with the body overnight to see if the person would wake up. Uh, apparently one of, um, one of Honey Bun's friends did this, or her, her family did this as a child. Uh, like and she she did it with him. She had to stay up with the voodoo bullshit. It is. It is. South Louisiana is very big on the waking. Uh, She says, "Keep it up, guys." Sincerely, Eaglet Joe. All right, now let's get back to this article that she mentioned. This comes from PleatedJeans dot com. First off, I give Eaglet Joe a hard time. I've met her in the real world a handful of times. She's generally a pleasant person. <laughs> generally. I don't know why I feel like she's my foil on the show. Um, because she keeps you tightly round and ready for serving as a leftover. Your foil. That was a fucking terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> was it that bad? Horrific. So you're saying you wouldn't mark that joke as a sock dollager in this episode of the podcast? 
I don't know if I'm more angry at the joke <laughs> or that you fucking got the word of the day right now. I think you're more angry that I got the word of the day. Probably, which softens the terrible joke. You're right. It was a bad it was, joke. But the, but, but the word of the day was a good move. Here's here's the problem, Eaglet Joe. I'm looking at this article that you sent me. Okay, so what, what the article is... Uh, Brits suck at labeling the United States, and there's 15 picks. This it comes from BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed asked a bunch of Brits to label a map of the United States. They failed miserably. Um, the first one it has California labeled and Texas and nothing else, and that gives you an idea of the humor to be found. Um, you know, there's several that have something like "I'm so sorry" doodled out in the margin or whatever because they know that they've done a terrible job of it. Uh, the fact of the matter is that. British people don't generally know the geography of the United States I don't outside know, I, I of... Couldn't, if you pulled up a map of England, I couldn't point well, to London. That's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say. Well, not just London, but like even in a broader sense. Okay, we know that the United Kingdom it, it consists of what? It's Scotland, Wales... Northern Ireland. Great Britain, is that <laughs> Northern Ireland? No, Northern Ireland is Ireland, right? No. And S- no, Northern Ireland is British. And the Republic of Ireland is the other one? Is that the way that it works? Right. Like if you're in if you're in Ireland, South Ireland, right? You they use the euro. Okay. If you go to North Ireland, it's the pound. But well, that doesn't make any sense because in Great Britain they use the euro now too, right? Pound too, man. They also use the pound. I got you. Well, that's fair enough, I suppose. Um. Anyway, it's a humorous article. I've seen some of these maps before, but it's uh, I it it's a visual medium, and it's not going to translate very well to the podcast. So, thank you for sharing the link. I'm going to share it out on our Facebook page because it's pretty funny, especially since we have some British listeners. But we're not going to go through the article in the. But it just proves episode. the point that sometimes when we talk about we talk about things like listeners are just going to know, like where's Louisiana. What's oh, yeah, very good point. Yeah, sometimes we we make assumptions about the knowledge base. Like we live in the South. Louisiana's in the South. You ready for some old news? I was born ready. Uh, you know, it's too bad Gonzo's leaving the show. Yeah, I can think of some other people I'd rather see leave the show. Who? Me. <laughs> this comes from ctvnews.ca. That's from uh, California, for those that don't know. Headline, judge orders 62-year-old man to wear I am a bully sign. This comes from South Euclid, Ohio. An Ohio man... What's a 16-year-old... What's this... What is a 60... Who the fuck is this? He's 62. Who was he bullying? That's a good damn question. An Ohio man is sitting on a street corner with a sign declaring he's a bully. So let me get this straight. We're getting an Ohio story... From a California news agency. Well, I said it's from California. I think that's way off. I think .ca is not California. I think .ca stands for a country, doesn't it? Isn't the, aren't the like like the like, like .dot com .dot com doesn't stand for a country. It stands for commercial. But I don't think I think generally the the major the high level domains like that are countries. I, Maybe I, I'm wrong. Uh, a judge ordered sixty two year old. Maybe CA is Canada. I don't think so. Oh, oh! From the CA, the Canadians were appalled. Yeah. Look at this bully. I mean, that sounds like a Canadian story, like sixty-two-year-old man bullying. He didn't say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a tale from the the horror land that is Ohio, America, <laughs> to the south of us, just across the border in Ohio. <laughs> listen, listen to what they have to put up with. I don't. I don't. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> An Ohio man is sitting on a street corner today with a sign. No, I'm Irish all of a sudden. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> An Ohio man is sitting on a street corner today with a sign declaring he's a bully as part of his sentence for harassing a neighbor and her disabled child. Or, excuse me, disabled children. A judge ordered 62-year-old... She has more than one disabled child? <laughs> one would imagine that that's... <laughs> yes. Oh, man, that's... <laughs> That's a, terrible. A judge ordered 62-year-old Edmund Aviv to display the sign for five hours on Sunday. It says, I am a bully, exclamation point. 
I pick on children that are disabled, and I am intolerant of those that are different from myself. My actions do not reflect an appreciation for the diverse South Euclid community that I live in. The Northeast Media Group reports that Aviv hey, arrived at the corner. That guy missed a chance. What? He should have ended it with, now give me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hateful I, racist bastard. And I bet I bet that fucker would have made money, man. And I'd like some change. <laughs> yeah. Uh if you're a if you're a hateful racist bastard, why don't you contribute to my legal defense fund? Um the Northeast Ohio Media Group reports that Aviv arrived at the corner just before nine AM, placing the hand lettered sign next to him as he sat in a chair. Court records show Aviv pleaded no contest to a disorderly what, conduct charge. What the fuck bullshit judgment? Like, if you're going to make that judgment, do it right. So he's out there for five hours, right? He gets there at nine. So that means he's from, what, nine to three? Uh, yeah. I had to do math, and that was difficult. But you know yes, what's nine going on? Nine three. to three? Nothing. People are fucking working. You get that motherfucker out there from six to nine, then he comes back and works four to seven. <laughs> Put him in the dinner rush is what you're saying. And yeah, put him in the dinner rush. Put him in the morning rush. Everybody's going to fucking work. It's like I'm gonna make you do this, but I'm gonna get like nobody's gonna fucking see it. <laughs> Don't feel so bad, Mister Man. Yeah, I mean it's a good idea, but I'm a pussy, so you know, go out there whenever. North I hear of the Thanksgiving during dinner times, pretty slow on the streets. North of the border, we wouldn't put up with that shit. <laughs> that don't truck in Canada. I'll tell you that, that right now. That truck in Canada. <laughs> we don't go for those kinds of shenanigans. <laughs> That's not a saying. <laughs> uh, have you have you heard of the website 538.com? So we're just going to leave the old man on the corner. We're not even going to fucking finish <laughs> well, no, the story. That's, that, that's is, that was the end of the story. He did his time. That's the end of the thing. That's the old news. He was a bully to his next door neighbors. He he he's sixty two. I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna assume that he has put in his. He's he's retired. He's put in his time, right? Sure. He's been a productive member of society. He has paid his taxes, right, all the way through the age right. of sixty two. What happened to freedom of speech? Say whatever the fuck you want. Well, I, you I guess that's why I didn't get jail time. Yeah, like maybe so. Him, they couldn't put him in jail for that. Uh, maybe not, but I mean, I, I mean, they, they don't go into specifics in the article. But like, I'm assuming what happened was, you know, so Mr. Aviv is sitting on the, the, his front stoop. The next door neighbor's kids are playing on the yard, and he's you know throwing around. He's like, "Hey, get your retard out of my yard," or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. That's not bad. Keep your retard out of his yard. Well, that's all not, he's asking. <clears throat> that's not. Don't. Like, if the kids in his yard. He's kind of proving the guy right. I like it. Ninety six episodes in, you take a heel turn. That's good. That's, that's no, good. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. There's no way. There's. I don't do. There's no. Let's take the yard example. I'm pretty sure the first. I don't know. 147 times this kid ended up in his yard. He probably walked him home. Like, hey man, you're in the wrong yard. Let's go home. <laughs> but 148. I mean, it's time to call a spade a spade, man. No, sir. <laughs> Especially if it's in your garden. I don't see. I don't see anything wrong with that. Are you familiar with the website five thirty eight dot com? No. Okay. It's from Nate Silver. So I assume it's like. I would assume that five thirty eight is like the companion website to four twenty dot com, except that it's all snack food. Like, you can just order snack food from 538. And you'll gain an extra 140 pounds over the course of a few yeah, years? Yeah, like, we already hit up 420. 538 is when we got to eat. Like, we got the munchies. <laughs> no. Uh, 538 is, uh, I don't know the origin of the name of the of the thing, though. But it's a partnership with ESPN. Nate Silver is running it. And it's all about the numbers. Like, it's heavy statistical analysis of different things. Sports, politics, news, pop culture, Heavy statistical analysis. Okay, kind of like numbers never lie. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so this article is called "A Statistical Analysis of the Work of Bob Ross," and I'm going to post a link to this because it is 
It is thorough. It's it's pretty amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you a couple of excerpts and then we're gonna get to some hard numbers here. Okay, let me guess the numbers. Well, let's read these excerpts first. Okay. Uh, 403 episodes of The Joy of Painting. Of the 403 episodes of The Joy of Painting, first ran in 83, ran through 19. That's enough to be syndicated, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 episodes is the mark for most people. Ran from 83 to 94, which continues to air in reruns on PBS stations nationwide. How many of those episodes did Ross paint in? He painted in all of them. No. The other episodes featured a guest. He painted in most of them. Oh, he had like a guest artist come in? Yes. I don't I've never I don't think I've ever seen one. Most frequently him. his son Steve Ross would be the guest. Oh, was it like I guess toward the end bringing him on to see if he could get him to keep the show alive maybe. Mm-hmm. Um so 11 years is the run 300 what do you say 47? 403 episodes. You were way, way off. off. <laughs> 403 episodes. 300 of them he was in. Way low. 381. Oh, 381. That's a lot. Man. That's a lot. Well, now he he was in all of them. 381 episodes he painted in. Uh so how, wow, how fucking terrible is it to be his son painting with him being in the studio there like that's got you call that a cloud? That's not a cloud. <laughs> I call you my happy little well, accident. If that's supposed to be a pond, if that's supposed to be a pond, where's the reflection of the mountains? Didn't I teach you better? So, so here's what happened. Uh, these guys took, uh, based on let's see, based on images of Bob Ross's paintings available in the Bob Ross Inc. store, I coded all of the episodes using 67 keywords describing content: trees. Water, mountains, weather, elements, man-made structures, etc. Stylistic choices in framing the paintings and guest artists for a grand total of 3,224 tags. That's the total number of things that could be applied to those 403 episodes Okay. to describe the content. We analyzed the data to find out exactly what Ross, who died in 1995... So roughly 30 tags an episode. Uh, something like that, painted for more than a decade on TV. They wanted to find out what had he painted. The top line results are to be expected. Wouldn't you know, he did paint a bunch of, what do you think the most common, yeah, there you go, trees, Trees, what else? The the top three you think, yeah. Water. Uh, Specifically, lakes. Lakes. Yeah. Um, So I put some numbers to Ross's classic figures of speech. He didn't paint oaks or spruces. He painted happy trees. He favored almighty mountains to peaks. Once he'd painted one tree, he didn't paint another. He painted a friend. Here's how often each tag that appeared more than five times showed up over those 381 episodes in which he painted. Okay? So I'm going to give you a word. You tell you guess and give me like a let's do it within 10. Okay? If you're anywhere within 10, you'll win. Okay. Okay. How many of Bob Ross's paintings contain at least one tree? These are by percentages of the 381 episodes. Uh, of the 381 episodes, I would so I, I could say like 90% if it was 80 yes, or 100 I'd be right. Uh why don't you choose a like a decade? Choose a 10. So is it within the 90s? Is it within the 80s? Is it within the 70s? I'm going to say in the 80s. 91%. Damn it! (laughs) I wanted to say 90 so bad. All right. How many feature at least two trees? Uh, 91%. You say if he's got one, it's the exact same number? A tree to Bob Ross is like Pringles to normal people. You can't you you can't just you can't have just one. Can't have just one. What about at least one mountain? Not a oh look. Every lake needs a tree. There's going to be a tree in every fucking lake one, right? Sure. But that doesn't mean there's a mountain with every lake. If lake is one of his top three, I'm going to say mountains got to be like forty. Do we really? I'm going to give that one thirty nine percent. Thirty-nine percent of his paintings have at least one mountain. Boom! Yeah, that's impressive. What about bushes? I'm gonna say bushes 
are in, I would think, less than mountains. Can I get a high-low there? I'll agree with you. It's okay. less than mountains. 26%. You're close, 30% for bushes. Okay. And finally, what about snow? What's the percentage that features snow? There's a lot of snow in the paintings that I remember, but then all of a sudden he'd go, you know, nice green with the everything's flowing and it's a pretty forest scene. Uh, okay, I'm going to say every mountain, especially if they're majestic, going to have snow on it. So that was, what, 41% for the mountains? I'm going to say he could use snow probably 12% more. So I'm going to say 53%. You were way off. 19% of his paintings featured snow. Bullshit. No. I don't remember. Him. Oh, maybe he kept, maybe he put clouds in front of mountains that cover up the snow. Wow. I was way off. Uh, given that Ross has painted a tree on a given painting. Okay. So if you're watching an episode and he has painted one tree. How many of those have birds? No. What's the percent that he will paint a second tree? We just We just went over that. N- no, 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 I'm saying once he's painted one, if you're watching an like episode. Like 98% of the time. Yeah, yeah, 93%. There's a 93% yeah, yeah. chance once he's painted one tree that there will be a second tree there. I'm going to share this article out because it's fascinating to me. If you, if you like me, like uh, the Lost Ambitions, uh, who we heard from a couple of weeks ago, uh, like uh, other guy here, if you like – Bob Ross, then you're going to love this article, and I am going to share it out. Speaking of the Lost Ambitions, they're going to be our um, our outro song again this week. Uh, not And So, the song that we featured last time. Instead, it'll be a song called Funny, a great uh, another great song from them, a great album as well. Check it out. There'll be links uh, all over our uh, website, twoguysonepod.com. You ready to wrap this thing up? Uh, like a douche in the night. Let me ask you something. You know the euphemism, let's fuck this monkey? <laughs> like, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know, like, let's get this done? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the other day, instead of saying that, I told Honey Bun, let's get this monkey fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she said, that's not the euphemism. That's not the phrase. And I said, sure. All I'm saying is, I'm admitting that the monkey needs to be fucked. I don't want to do the job myself. She said, that's fine. You can just finish the phrase. And I said, what do you mean? The phrase is, her response was, let's fuck this monkey. I'll hold the tail. (laughs) Uh, I've never heard it. I've never heard it. Never heard it that way? That way. Let's go fuck this monkey. I'll hold the tail. No, I've always heard, I'm fucking the donkey. You just hold the tail. (laughs) And that's that's the absolute reverse. It's like not only am I going to commit to bestiality, but I really need you to come help me for it. Well, that's it's, not cool. Well, it's like whenever you're doing something that's stressful or you're doing something that's hard and you have somebody come up and try to tell you how to do it. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, man. I'm fucking the donkey. You just hold the tail. <laughs> like, I want a wrench. Hand me a goddamn wrench. I understand. I understand. I, I am I am more of the mindset, uh, the fucking of this monkey is an unpleasant uh, necess- necessity. Necessity. So I'm going to have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delegate it. I'm going to delegate the monkey I'm not, fucking. I'm not, down, I'm not down to monkey fucking. <laughs> but if we just statistically analyzed this show, animal fornication would be like 20 goddamn percent. (laughs) I don't know what that says about us. On that note, let's hear a word from Bob Ross. It's our little Zen moment for the week every week. You can use a brush rack to hit the brush on. Otherwise, you will Mm. become unpopular real fast. (laughs) I'm I'm assuming at first it was like, oh, because you'll be splashing paint all over everybody's stuff. No, you'd just be hitting him with a fucking brush. What? He said you can you can use a brush rack to hit your brush on. Otherwise, you'll become unpopular real fast. If you don't use the brush rack to hit your brush on, you what are you going to hit it on? Why would you? I thought you'd hit it to clean it. Oh, you're saying you're going to become unpopular because you'll have dirty brushes? You'll oh, be your, leaving your dirty brushes. Will be stiff. And then well, but if it comes if, up, use the brush, won't be able to paint. 
Okay, but other people aren't using your brushes, right? I thought everybody had their own brushes. Look, man, I, I think, you're saying I'm coming from I a think, world of privilege. I think where everybody like can his, afford brushes. I think just like his paintings, there's more than one way to look at his phrases. <laughs> He's like a transformer. There's more than meets the eye. Yeah, sure. <laughs> If that's what you get out of it, that's exactly what it means. All right, then. Get more like that from BobRossQuotes.com. We appreciate them uh, for all of the uh, the great stuff from Bob. Uh, until next week, we want you to go to the website, twoguysonepod.com. Check out all the uh, the free funny there. Uh, check out uh, the links to the old shows. Check out our Facebook links. Check out our Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can find us on all of those locations and more. Also, while you're at the website, um, support not only us by shopping through the Amazon links, but also check out um, our artists. All of the artists that have been featured on the show, you can find them on that support tab on our page uh, and then uh, click through to get iTunes links or SoundCloud or Bandcamp or wherever you can get their music. You can find them uh, at our website, twoguysonepod.com. Also, call us. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, or go fuck off. It's for our 100th uh, episode. It's coming Go up. fuck yourself. Yeah, 504-613-5635. That's the phone number to call. Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this, and this has been the show. <laughs> Look at my face. Pod blocked. Yeah, I did. You? How long have you been snuck it in there? How long have you been? Uh, how long have you been waiting on that one? About twenty seconds. <laughs> you just decided. Yeah. Just right there at the end. You know what? If I don't say it, I'm gonna feel like it'll be like like oral blue balls. It'll be like 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 pod blue balls. Okay. And, I don't, and this has been the podcast. That ain't my problem. <laughs>